welcome to episode 100 of our SAP on Azure video podcast. Today is July 7th, and together with Robert and Goran, we are here to talk about anything related to SAP and Microsoft. Hello, everyone. Hello. Today, Hello. we have reached a huge milestone, episode 100. So when Robert, Goran, and I published our first podcast episode in July 2020, the main motivation was to talk about the world of SAP and Microsoft. So there were and are actually some fantastic resources about SAP and about Microsoft, but nothing that really talked about what you can do when you do both together, basically. So in the last two years, we had a lot of fantastic content. We, we talked about Microsoft as an SAP customer. We talked about different partner solutions, about co-development that we are doing with SAP and some of the results of, of this co-development. We had colleagues, a lot of fantastic colleagues from Microsoft on the show, and we also had colleagues from SAP here as well. So it was always a very interactive and, and I think great uh, yeah, trove of, of, of content that we had. Yeah. So what we thought was missing and actually a nice fit for episode 100 was to talk about SAP as a customer of Microsoft and how um, SAP are using services from Microsoft. Obviously, we can only talk about the stuff that is actually public. So we discussed a little on who should we invite for this. There are so many colleagues at SAP that we are working with, but most of them would probably only be able to provide us with insights on what's going on in, in their specific area. So we would have required to invite quite a lot of colleagues from SAP to have a holistic overview of what we are doing. So. With this, we decided to invite Peter Fischer, who is the Global Account Director for SAP at Microsoft. So similarly, like when you would talk about Microsoft, it might be good to invite outsiders to talk about it. Peter can hopefully provide us with some very good overviews and insights on what's happening on the SAP side, especially obviously in the context of um, Microsoft, of course. So with this, we'll skip the news section for this week and hand over directly to Peter. So welcome, Peter. Holger, um, thank you very much. And thank you for hosting me here, for having me here. It's a pleasure talking to you. Um, I'm with Microsoft now for 18 and a half years, most of the time dealing with SAP, although I took a little break off SAP when I uh, managed the relationship with two major utility companies. but. Since seven years, I'm back on SAP purely only. So uh, it's a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very much for having me here. Thank you, Peter. And and maybe before we go into the details, and um, I think it's it's also interesting. So all of us, all of for the four of us, we are all based um, out of Waldorf, basically. So so we are really working on the SAP campus. I think we're we're almost embedded into the uh, the work, the daily life at, at SAP. I mean, obviously right now we're most of us are working from home, but um, all of us are really Waldorf and we have a strong history. I mean, both Goran, Robert and I, we came from SAP. So I think it's it's a uh, it's yeah, it's it's really the, the mm -hmm. SAP colleagues that, that are talking now about yeah. um, SAP. Absolutely. So, and since I'm sorry, Goran. Absolutely. And since um, Microsoft has an own regional office in Waldorf since about 20 years or so, or 20 plus years, I'm proud to be also in a, in a parallel role, the regional office lead <coughs> for Microsoft for the smallest, but not the least important regional <laughs> office of Microsoft in Germany. So having Microsoft uh, German headquarters in Munich Waldorf is one of the six regional offices of Microsoft in Germany, and I'm proud uh, about the fact that we nowadays have some 80 plus colleagues um, in the regional office of Microsoft in Waldorf. Of course, not all of them are working on SAP related topics, but um, it's not a tiny office anymore, and it's a good family, and it's a great relationship, and a good basis for the extended relationship we're having with SAP since Absolutely. 25 plus years. Yeah. <clears throat> when when you Robert, um, Holger say, you know, we are so embedded through the Waldorf office as well to SAP. I, sometimes I remember one of, one of our Microsoft colleague, who is part of the engineering, sit at SAP, and sometimes he would say. 
I do not know anymore for which company I'm working, you know, so <laughs> I think I'm working for SAP, you know, kind of. <laughs> so maybe that, yeah. Absolutely. That's a kind of interesting point, you know, because about when we talk about those relationship between the Microsoft and SAP, you know, so basically <clears throat> here we have SAP also as a customer and as a, as a partner as well. So Peter, you're quite in all, especially also from a customer side a lot. Maybe you can go more in detail and, and quickly outline how the relationship between the SAP and Microsoft looks like in real life, right? Absolutely, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. So if we talk about SAP, we talk about different perspectives Microsoft's having about SAP. So on one side, it's the account team. It is the team uh, we are managing here for SAP as our global and strategic customer. But on the other side, we also have the partner world of it. So there's um, an own organization called SAP Business Unit, uh, led by Joao Coteau mm -hmm. Redmond, who is driving the partnership, the GDM activities, the, the mutual activities we are driving for our mutual customers around the world, because most of the enterprises out there are mutual customers of both SAP and Microsoft. And the third aspect comes um, from the point that Microsoft itself is a huge customer of SAP. So it's the three of us, the account team, the SAP partner, also called SAP business unit team, and Microsoft as a customer of SAP. We three build a 360 degree view on SAP. And of course, all of that is backed up by our colleagues from the engineering teams, so whether it is Scott Guthrie's team in terms of Azure engineering, or whether it's more on the modern workplace side, Roger Shah's team uh, supporting us for SAP as our customer, as our partner, as our vendor as well, if you like. Mm. And this yeah. this collaboration and this relationship has been going on for, for quite some time, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, ever since, if you look back when Hasso Plattner together with Bill Gates met about, I think, nearly 30 years ago, it became a unique partnership. It became a unique relationship between those big, huge organizations around the world. And it's truly unique in terms of what we are doing together. Of course, naturally, based on the size of what we are doing on both sides, there's sometimes some overlapping. There's always some competition coming along with it, mm -hmm. right? Naturally, but in principle, we have about, I don't know, more than 85, 90, 95% um, on real partnership and a little bit here and there on a competition mm -hmm. side. Yeah, we, I think on, on this podcast, we already discussed how, how Microsoft is one of the biggest uh, SAP customers and how we are using SAP, how we are re dealing with that with, with from our Microsoft IT perspective. But of course, uh, SAP is also a big customer of Microsoft. So can you t talk about uh, what solution SAP is using from, from Microsoft? Absolutely. So in principle, we are looking at two big areas. On one side, ever since we are dealing with SAP or serving SAP as our strategic customers, SAP is using our, our modern work uh, mm -hmm. solutions. So when they first deployed Office and Windows on their machines for their internal users, so for on their laptops or PCs, which was then developed onto more the Office 365 on the cloud-based solutions. They're using those M365, as they nowadays are called M365 uh, cloud solutions from, SA, uh, from Microsoft. And on the other side, a huge uh, flavor of the relationship is around Azure. SAP runs on a so-called four plus one strategy for uh, for global hyperscalers where Microsoft and Azure is one of them. And the plus one stands for SAP's own data centers, Converge Cloud um, uh, known, or S Converge Cloud also known. So for that reason, we have both sides, modern workplace solutions, more used or only used 
solely used for SAP internal purposes. Mm -hmm. Azure as an infrastructure platform, but way above infrastructure only nowadays, is used at SAP for the internal use. So whatever mm -hmm. SAP IT is doing mm -hmm. to run their own SAP business critical landscapes, previously only on-prem, mm -hmm. nowadays on-prem, but also on Azure and more moving they are uh, month over month or time after time onto Azure. And using Azure as well as a, one of the hyperscalers to serve mutual customers. So whether SAP is selling rice as um, a bundle of services, which runs and comes along with Azure, that is one part, or whether you're looking at a number of SaaS, com uh, SaaS solutions of SAP, which are running on Azure. Just mm -hmm. as an example, if yeah. you're a success factor company, if you're a success mm -hmm. factors customer, probability is pretty high that your SaaS solution will run on Azure. If you're a commerce okay. cloud customer, probability is fairly high that you're running on Azure. Mm -hmm. So I think, um, and, and I think that there are a lot of actually great success stories around this uh, that uh, where, we, where we talk about this, or we have already talked about this in, in public, but it's still, I think, always good to uh, to to come back to that and, and, and remind uh, what fantastic things we're, we're doing there. I think when I, when I look at what we had the discussions with um, Microsoft IT, for example, Hans Reuter um, was on the show some, some time back. What I always really loved is that um yeah what we call we eat our own dog food basically so um as, as as robert mentioned we we are microsoft is a huge customer of sap we are we are running sap on azure we are we are using um sap um, and have integrated it into um teams into power platform into a lot of sharepoint sites and stuff like that so microsoft is a huge customer of sap and i think one of the important things is that um, we we're learning a lot of things there and yeah. i know that um, our it department is very closely aligned also with the sap it department so there there's a lot of um, um, discussions happening there there's a lot of exchange happening i mean hans um, talked about how we are uh, um, aligning and, and and learning also from the sap team how to optimize um, our own um, instance of HANA, for example, because obviously SAP knows best how to optimize and tune um, a HANA system, whereas we probably know pretty well how to run Azure and, and the infrastructure on Azure. So I know um, when it comes to SAP IT, and, and I think, um, Peter, you mentioned that SAP has this four plus one strategy where, where, where SAP really offers a lot of choice to their customers where the customer can choose um, which um, hyperscaler they want to um, to select. But I think what is really interesting and, and what um, I think even back then Hans also mentioned, when we look at SAP IT, um, I think they also made some some interesting decisions that are um, where we also obviously have some some um, uh, customer stories, some success stories. Indeed. So a couple of, of thoughts here. A, SAP runs on SAP. Yeah. Similar, Microsoft runs on Microsoft. Does that mean that we only run on our own products? No, not at all. It's a colorful world and it depends on the the demand and the uh, requirements of each workflow process, whatever it is, to decide what is best. And Microsoft decided many years ago that we don't in event uh, we don't invest in an ERP solution which will sacrifice our requirements. At Microsoft, being a huge global organization, we decided in favor of SAP many years ago. So all our ERP systems, our finance systems, are running on SAP solutions. Likewise, if you look at SAP, they decided well. Um, they go for Microsoft solutions when it comes both to the modern workplace side, as well on the, on the cloud platform, on the infrastructure side, they decided 
in favor of Azure because um, Thomas Sowers, again, his previous role when he became CIO many years ago before he became exec board member, we sat together with him and he looked at the all the high risk gains <coughs> And he, he looked at a number of aspects on availability, on stability, on the pricing, of course, on the data protection uh, side as well. And based on his um, evaluations, he then finally decided, hey, SAP IT, if they move any of their business critical landscapes onto a hyperscaler, it will be on Azure for mm -hmm. a number of reasons. Right? Mm -hmm. um, so, in terms of competition, yes, both companies have solutions um, on their price list which do compete. But coming from an original, maybe best of breed uh, approach, both companies are more on the platform side nowadays. And this is true for, for SAP. If you look at the modern workplace, um, there's a number of great solutions, whether it's security, whether it's uh, collaboration where you also could go for a third party solution mm -hmm. but it makes more sense looking at the deep integration of all those different additional features and solutions it makes more sense to follow a platform approach than a best of breach approach yeah. best of breach <clears throat> approach. and for that reason um, not purely but as ap decided on the modern workplace side to to uh, bet on the SA, on the Microsoft offering, knowing that there might be some best of breed solutions here and there. Yeah, mm -hmm. and integration is also a TCO topic, you know. So because if you lack anywhere certain pieces of integration, it is becoming extremely expensive. Plus, uh, who would do third party? I mean, maintenance. It's always the challenge. So mm -hmm. I believe here, because many, many are using both sides, it makes sense, right? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's uh, the cost side, the TCO aspect, it is efficiency, it is speed, it is most of all user friendliness. If you go for a one platform or mainly one platform approach, um, and not to forget, uh, which is important nowadays, all the data protection stuff. We're living in a very agile world, and this is true as well for data protection. And this is on top of what you said, Holger, before. It's not only the engineering, the Microsoft IT is sitting together with SAP IT. It is as well the, the legal guys sitting yep. together, the data protection experts sitting together. and checking what is best for both Microsoft and SAP and what is then best for our mutual customers. That is an extremely beneficial aspect of the partnership and the relationship. I was yeah. just going to say, I think um, it's we are sitting together and then obviously this benefits ourselves as, as Microsoft and as SAP. But in the end, the, the, the results of our discussions are really what is also then a huge value add for, for customers. And if I if I look, I mean, we talked about uh, the Teams integration. We talked about um, just last week we we, we had um, Sven Kohlhaas and we talked about the private link services that we have. And and in the, in the past we had so many discussions um, when it comes to improving the way how we migrate systems to Azure and stuff like that. What I always find extremely fascinating is that in a lot of cases, both Microsoft and SAP are basically customer zero. So we test these things that we are doing internally, both on the Microsoft side and on the SAP side. And then um, we, we obviously also provide a lot of feedback to the product teams. I, I still remember we had um, Joao when, when we talked about um, uh, the Azure, Microsoft Sentinel integration and the extensions to SAP. Um, and we had um, Aaron from, from the Microsoft IT um, joining us there. And he was saying, look, he was, customer zero and he gave so much feedback. This feature is missing, that feature is missing. These are um, um, scenarios that we need. And they all went into the product before it was actually released to the customers. And a similar thing is happening on the SAP side that they are also, I mean, certainly not not everything. I mean, we, we also don't use all of our, our products, um, um, our joint products there, but there are a lot of things where 
really Microsoft and SAP where we are customer zero, where we are testing these functionalities, where we are providing feedback with both of our experience. I mean, Microsoft is looking from from a, with with Microsoft glasses on the on the situation, and SAP is doing the same side with their huge expertise on the SAP. And these two uh, flows or, or initiatives is something that I find extremely fascinating because in the end, what we are doing then is is a is a result where where customers can really benefit from this. Yeah, couldn't agree more with that. It is for the benefit of SAP and for the benefit of Microsoft, but ultimately it's for them the benefit of our what you just described. So um, looking at the engineering to engineering exchange we are having on a daily basis or whether it's between any experts coming from the legal side, from the pricing side, from the from the GTM side, whatever it is, it's so many best practice sharing between both um, organizations between SAP and Microsoft. Um, it's it's unbelievable how deep the relationship is. Yeah, um, absolutely. And I'm just seeing that Benjamin joined us. Hi, Benjamin. Hey, everyone. Okay. How are you doing? And just to just to complete uh, that thought here, I fully agree with what you said, Holger, because SAP appreciates the feedback they're getting from Microsoft as their customer. And nowadays we are becoming a, a huge rise customer of SAP. Yep. Same is true uh, on the other side. When we are selling, if you wish, Azure to SAP or whether SAP is using our, our modern work solutions, our M365 solutions, we are always keen to see and to hear their feedback. SAP is a very demanding customer, don't get me wrong, but they have all the rights to do that, to be a demanding customer. They are one of our most strategic customers around the world of Microsoft, and we are always learning from them how to improve our solutions from the engineering side, from the user experience side, from the pricing side, etc. So for that reason, we are always happy, we are keen, we do appreciate getting SAP's valuable feedback every day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the also always interesting topic when you run an SAP in Azure is sustainability, right? And um, <clears throat> maybe two of you can tell us more how we work with SAP and SAP work us in this area. We are not defining one product which we are going to engineer, develop and then sell to the market. We are more making sure that whatever we are doing as a RISE customer on the Microsoft side, being a customer of SAP and vice versa, if we are looking at um, SAP as our customer, we are always checking not only accessibility, which is here since ages, right, as a as a, a very prominent and important topic for both organizations, but uh, since some years we are also exchanging thoughts on sustainability. So we do bring the sustainability leads of both organizations together. They are in constant discussions and talks with each other. And we are looking to make sure that with all the sustainability aspects we are bringing into Azure to be one of the, the most sustainable platforms for infrastructure um, as a service. This is true as well on the SAP side. So for that, um, as said, to make a long story short, we are not marketing one product, but we make sure that we as big um, vendors as big yeah. partners for our mutual customers that we stick our heads together and make sure that we keep working and fine tuning and further develop and engineer our solutions which depend on each other, whether it's RISE on Azure or whether it's any kind of modern work uh, place solution um, sacrificing the needs of our customers around the world to run in an efficient way and in a sustainable way uh, because we own that to, to our children as well. Uh, we, we have the need to make sure that everything is running in its best sustainable way. 
And I think well, actually, I mean, looking looking at this, as you said, um, Microsoft and SAP, they're, they're both such big vendors so or, or, or companies that can have a huge impact um, for, for other companies. And I, I actually think if I look at what SAP is doing um, in sustainability when it comes to supply chain to, to really um, highlight where something, so, so really being able to track what is happening um, from, from a sustainability point of view throughout the, the, the whole supply chain. And if I then look also at what Microsoft is doing, um, especially when it comes to running um, Azure data centers more and more efficient, I think that that's just a natural fit where, where, where we'll hopefully work um, even closer together and, and where we'll jointly have an impact similar like what we what we already do on a, on a business area as SAP and Microsoft for our customers, where we can also have a big impact um, on a from a sustainability um, point to to our customers. Let's put it this way. Whatever SAP comes up with a sustainability solution or to support sustainability. With their solutions, Microsoft is keen to support that approach. In terms of whether it's infrastructure as a service or whether it's any other solution um, to support that approach of SAP and likewise SAP is supporting us in terms of RISE architecture at Microsoft to make it um, as sustainable as possible. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned several times SAP RISE, and I think from from that perspective, uh, SAP RISE as as big initiative from from SAP to help the customer to not just uh, go with uh, uh, with the digital transformation, but also to modernize their landscapes and to apply new new roles and new technologies or whatever. I mean, uh, it's clear. You already mentioned that we have some colorful uh, way of of doing uh, from both sides. But of course, I think without our partners, and we already discussed on this channel several times about how to use NetApp solutions in SAP landscapes. So. I think from both sides, from SAP side and Microsoft side, we cannot do uh, everything what we are doing without our big partners. So can you share some some insights about how we are dealing with partners, how we are collaborate together with SAP and our partners on on maybe not just SAP race in, in any any corner of that that big big uh, partnership between us and SAP? Yes, so whatever example I would give um, I would please one partner, but would <laughs> be unpolite to another partner. So I'm not going to mention <clears throat> partner names or any specific scenarios because both SAP and as well Microsoft ever since we were founded, it is clear that we depend on our partners. None of us can do real business without partners. We need them and we have a huge ecosystem at the Microsoft side and a huge ecosystem on the SAP side when it comes to partner whether it's SI partners, whether it's ISV partners, you name it, right? So um, although we are big organizations, both Microsoft and SAP, we bet on our partner ecosystems on both sides. We can't do it without any partner. Yeah. Cool. So I think, um, Benjamin, you sneaked in uh, during the recording and um, maybe before uh, we, we ask you also a few questions. Um, uh, can you quickly introduce yourself? What, why, why did you join the call now? I mean, I pinged <laughs> you, but <laughs> why, why, are, why are you here? <clears throat> so what are you doing at Microsoft and where are you coming from? Well, thank you um, first and foremost um, for, for having me. It's a pleasure being here. Um, together with Peter, you know, we're trying to um, please and uh, work as best as possible uh, with SAP, so I'm the global um, account executive um, for um, SAP at Microsoft now for nearly one and a half years. I've joined from SAP. Um, I've been there for 10 years on a two, two uh, five year tenure. In between, I've been working for a large um, global audit and consulting firm as well. I've been in various roles there from product uh, management to consulting. Um, to sales and now I have this delightful job to basically work with SAP still but from a Microsoft perspective and um, it's just great um, because the companies have so much things in common and they can learn so many things from each other. 
Well, Benjamin, um, actually, I, I mentioned in the beginning that Goran, Robert and I, we're, we're both from SAP. And as you said, you're also um, ex-SAP. And actually, both of us, we go a very, very long time back and we were working on one of the first joint products that SAP and Microsoft developed. Good. So both of us, um, can, can, do, do you remember? Let, let's start by that. It, it was a fascinating time and um, this is uh, where I was, you know, very um, young age, just joined um, <laughs> SAP. And, you know, there was this great, great large company out of um, America, um, uh, out of Redmond, now starting to partner with SAP. Yes, and um, those were the times of, um, yes, Microsoft Duet. I've learned a lot, right? And, um, you know, I've been to places thanks to this, um, you know, um, partnership I've never been before. Uh, which was great as a consultant. Um, but the good thing is, right, um, I would say uh, without going too much um, here in the details, but, you know, what was the vision back then, but very complicated from a technology perspective, just because, you know, most of all the things were still running in data centers the customers had, and a lot of disjointments has been happening. Let's fast forward 10, 15 years being in the cloud space, um, I would say uh, buckle up. There are some astonishing and great things coming between the partners SAP and Microsoft, right? When we think about what Duet um, was back then from a vision perspective, right? Which brings the best out of your SAP and Microsoft <laughs> investments together, right? So yeah. think about our teams, think about all the new things we've been also you know, bringing to the market lately uh, with Microsoft Loop, with Context IQ, um, you know, up to, you know, Microsoft Mesh with, uh, you know, and our ambitions towards the metaverse. So, you know, I think um, back then um, is still now, um, but uh, more reality. <laughs> no, ab absolutely. And I, I think what, what, you, what you said is exactly with, with Duet, we had this vision to bring um, a, an even better user experience to the end user. And at that time, it was really about um, getting SAP data into Outlook, for example, um, allowing um, you end users to work with Excel and update. I, I still remember our demand planning scenario that we had where you where you had the data in Excel and from there you could um, um, work with your SCM system. That, that was one thing, but it was really um, always there to how can we improve the user experience? And I think uh, you, you already mentioned a few um, cool things that are, that are announced on the Microsoft side. Um, I think one, one other interesting thing is obviously also what we're doing with HoloLens. And I know that Thomas sauer Essig had some, some fantastic um, demos already where, where he, he showed how um, using the HoloLens you could uh, work with, with an SAP system. I don't know, are there things that you could share what, what we are doing um, or what also SAP is doing? I mean, again, th these are public cases, obviously. Um, I think at TechEd he had some some really cool demos where Thomas showed how to uh, work with with the Hololens and and connect this to an SAP system. Are there any other things that you? Um, well, let, let's put it. I, I know there's a lot of things happening, but are, are there things that you can talk about in public that we're doing with with Hololens and SAP? Yeah, so um, I guess, you know, HoloLens virtual and mixed reality, they're always great um, from from a showcasing perspective, right? And both, you know, ourselves, but also SAP, they've been having lots of labs and prototype activities. Um, you know, this is great uh, for being on stage and, you know, uh, making an impact. Um, and that, um, I think, continues what makes me happy. You know, especially you've seen this during the pandemic where people mm -hmm. weren't allowed to travel. And some of our customers, Microsoft customers, have been making very um, you know, open statements about, you know, HoloLens and all, all um, the entire remote assist capabilities, for instance, coming from dynamics like Intel, right? Mm -hmm. There are several, you know, there are similar cases, uh, right? I would say at SAP, and I'm very happy that they started to use things also, you know, not only from a prototyping perspective, but they're using it right for their internal operations without, you know, disclosing, you know, the, the details here. Um, they are a software provider, right? Um, and um, they serve um, out of their own data centers um, in the cloud. 
Um, so um, you know, have your imagination run. But um, you know, I think it's 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 great that this is coming out of um, you know the uh, prototyping area, and you see real business value coming. And whenever <clears throat> I think, and this is the great um, thing with SAP, when you know um, SAP starts to explore and adopt things for their internal operations, this is the point where they then also start to think about you know how could this improve our products. Right, and there are already announcements, and they've been made a year ago by Thomas Saueressig um, for the enterprise product development um, tool or product out of digital supply chain, where you have a HoloLens integration mm -hmm. scenario there. Right, and then think about HoloLens virtual and mixed reality also in the larger context of um, you know the metaverse um, capabilities which are coming. And SAP has already stated publicly where they see value, right, in metaverse scenarios across, for instance, their success factor suite, across their customer experience suite, but also in digital supply chain, where we as Microsoft are putting a very large emphasis with the industri industrial metaverse going forward. So, and as an amazing area for collaboration. Um, where I would, I think, you know, these um, two companies fit them extremely well, right? Business process context, deep industry expertise paired up with cutting edge platform um, technology, which we are providing um, at Microsoft, right? And if we thrive, you know, it's um, it's best for the customer, right? And we're, I, we're accelerating. Benjamin, I think you, you just made a fantastic pitch so that we will invite you again once uh, once there's more to share. Um, I, I know Happy. that there are some some fantastic things in in, in the works, and uh, I think with the, the the collaboration that we have between SAP and Microsoft, I mean we we started this a long long time ago, and I'm sure um, it will continue for a very very long time, and it's it's great. That uh, to to know that that both of you are wor really working for the SAP account team, that you are um, looking after SAP and and trying to help SAP as best as possible. So just, uh, yeah, just, just one more thought, uh, adding to what Robert said a few minutes ago. When we talk about transformation, and when we started talking with SAP about transformation many years ago, uh, of course it was uh, clear that we look at lift and shift scenarios. The most business value, the most benefits are not coming from lift and shift. The most benefits customers will see is when they look at modernization. Mm. And this is where our discussions and our work actually goes to in that relationship, in that partnership with SAP to more and more focus on the real modernization of the stuff, mm. the platforms of the solutions, of the apps, of the applications. This is where customers gain most benefit out of it at the end of the day. And it's, if we talk about transformational um, things, we look at both the technical aspects and the cultural aspect. And it goes hand in hand because yeah, um, as Satya said many years ago, um, culture eats strategy for breakfast. And then he added when he was criticized for that, uh, saying he actually added, no, I have to correct myself. Culture eats strategy for breakfast and for lunch, he added, right? So that this is something where we not only talk between engineers and developing specific technologies further, but we also have a deep exchange on the cultural aspects mm -hmm. of transformation. Of Makes sense. Yep, absolutely. Cool, I think this is a fantastic um, closing for our episode 100. Um, Let's see whether we can reach episode 200 at some point in time. But I think it was really great um, to, to have now, again, after um, talking to uh, Microsoft as an SAP customer, talking about partners, um, talking about a lot of engineering collaborations, I think it was really great to having both of you um, on, on this show today to talk about SAP as a customer. And I think um, we'll, we'll definitely have lots of more um, sessions in the future, also with colleagues from SAP that will talk about their specific area. But I think, thank you very much. It was really great to, to get an overview of um, SAP as a customer from a holistic point of view. Thank you so much. It was a great discussion. Thank you for having us here. Thanks. Thank My you very pleasure much. Thank you guys. To talk again.
Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.